What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be creating unique file names. All right, so sometimes when you deal with a numerous amount of file names, for example, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of file names, you need to come up with ways to create unique file names. One way, of course, you can do it is sequentially, something like file one, file two, file three. But after all, that might not be the best way if you're getting files from multiple sources you'll have to keep checking what your current file could be prone to mistakes. For example, you might by mistake have a file name with a space due to misspelling, and that'll create another sequential loop where you're adding to that one, two, three, four. So when dealing with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of file names, it's good to create unique file names. When I was dealing with web scraping images and stuff like that, this is what I used. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of images to try to create unique file names. All right, so I will give you a simple toy example and I'll show you how to create unique file names. So the first thing is we have two functions, save to file and load pickle. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with pickle, pickle is Python's inherent way to save and load data. So you could actually save and load data structures unique to Python, dictionaries, lists, etc. And it's called serialization. That's the correct sort of the official terminology. I'm not going to go into too many details, but it just takes the pickle file name and the data and it saves the data to a pickle file. And this is just to load the pickle file to get back our data. So two simple functions to save and load data. All right, so we'll run this and then we'll run this. And now what we're going to do is save our data. So we have a data, which is a list consisting of three numbers, a three, two, one and we have a pickle file that I named testing.pickle. So I will run this, and now I will run this above function save to file. So save to file, save to file, pickle file, data. And data is of course this portion here. So I run this, and now if we check the directory, you see that I have something called testing.pickle. So this uh, pickle PKL extension is one of the official formats for saving a file as a pickle. The other one is .pickle, if I'm not mistaken. I think in Python 2, they use .pickle. In Python 3, it's .pkl. I would have to go back and check, but you guys can check. Or they're interchangeable, and you can use one or the other. I'm not really too sure at the top of my head. All right. So we save the pickle, and now what I'm going to show you is that if we have another data structure, 421, and we use the same pickle file, testing that pickle, and if we run the save that to file function, it's going to overwrite the pickle file. So if I try to load it, load pickle, you'll see it loads the, the uh, updated data structure instead of the original. So this is one thing you have to be careful of with pickles. You can easily overwrite your file. Now usually you don't need to create random names for pickles, but since my next video is going to be dealing with pickles, I felt like I should just introduce pickles in this video. But usually you don't deal with hundreds of thousands of pickles. Usually you'll have like maybe some images with you know hundreds of thousands of random images and that you just need to make sure they're not overwriting each other. Anyway, now we'll go on to creating the unique names. First, I'll give you a brief introduction to random.choice. Random.choice takes a list or an iterable, and it will randomly choose one of the elements. So if I run this, it randomly chose one. If I run this again, it randomly chose one again, and it chose three. So the good part about random.choice is that there is replacement. If it chooses something, it replaces it. So in probability, you've probably seen those like bags with marbles and you have with replacement and without replacement. So if I grab a black marble, do I put it back in or for my next grab, do I grab without replacing it? So the same thing in this situation, random that choice, you want to make sure there's replacement because the uniqueness will of the file name will just get smaller and smaller if there's no replacement. Anyway, in this case, there is replacement, so you don't have to worry about that. So random that choice, you randomly pick an element from your iterable. All right, so now we have a string. We can import string, 
And string has a lot of methods, but the one I want to focus on is ASCII letters. So let's just run this. So it gives you a list of all of the ASCII letters. So it's all of the lowercase and all of the uppercase uh, ASCII letters. So if we check the length, it's 52. So 26 times 2, which is 52. Yes. All right. So that's a list of all the characters. And now we can combine them with a random choice to create random strings. So here is an example of that. First, we choose the length to decide how long our string should be. And then for each iteration through the range of the length, so we're iterating range amount of times, in this case three. So for each iteration, we just pick a random choice from the ASCII letters. So if I run this, you'll see we get a list of PWE, once again, GTS. And remember, we have lowercase and capital letters, so that will help with the uniqueness of the list. We run it again. Basically, you're getting three unique letters. Now, there's just one part we have to add, and it's this empty space dot join. So what this does is it essentially takes a list and joins each element of the list. And here, we're joining it with an empty space in between. So essentially, this LRU would just be joined together you know, produce a string with L, R, U as the string characters. So let me just run this. Now that we have the function saved to memory, we can run random string. And basically, it's the same thing as this, but it's in string format. And we're using six here. If I run this again, we're getting unique characters. All right, so if 52 letters is not enough, String also has something called string.digits. You could check the dots. There might be characters as well. I'm not sure, but you have to be careful with characters in Windows. But uh, nevertheless, here is string.ascii characters, uh, letters, and string.digits if you want to expand your total list of characters. So it's the lowercase, uppercase, and letters. All right. So that's pretty much the gist how to uh, create random letters. Now, I've just updated this function. So define save to file, pickle file data, which is the same thing. Now, all this does is if it checks if the pickle file exists, if it does exist, if always that path that exists, this is the way to check if a file exists, we'll split it because remember a file has a file name and an extension. So we get the file name and extension. Then all we'll do is for the new pickle file, We'll take the base name and add a random string. So in this situation, all we're doing is we're holding on to the base name and then we're just adding a random string. So this way, if you want to search for a certain type of pickle file, say you're, you're saving lists of cars and you can name your pickle file cars and you can use that as the base name and just add random strings. So you can differentiate between all of the different car pickle files. So that's basically what I'm doing here. So we have file, which is the base file name, plus a random string to differentiate between all the different car pickle files. And then we have to, of course, add the extension as well. So we get the full pickle file name. And we'll just print it out so you can see. And so if the file exists, we do this. If not, we just take the original pickle file name, which is here. So this name gets either updated here or get the pickle file name from here. And then we just run these same lines of code as the original function to actually save the data to the pickle file. So I'll run this. And now I will just run this. And you'll see that since uh, testing that pickle already exists, it should create a new unique name using testing as the base name. All right, so our new name is testing underscore ILC. Now, it's not really creating a unique file name, but the odds of having two file names be the same name is extremely low. And that's just due to probability. So if you guys know permutations and you're using 52 as your total list of where you want to choose characters from, and depending on how big the length of your string is, random string is, basically it's 52, let's say we did it times 5. So 52 
to the fifth. So I can't even read this. This is 380 million 240032. So, so essentially that's how many unique file names you can create. So the odds clashing when you're dealing with 100,000, I'm assuming it'll be something like 100,000. I can't even see that. That looks like 10,000, 100,000 divided by this thing. We have 100,000 images. Let's see. So 0 0.0002, and I guess I should just uh, multiply this by 100 to get the actual percentage. Because again, Japanese keyboards, I multiply by 100. So 0.02% a file clash, I guess, when you're dealing with 100,000 images. So the next image will take 0.02%. So basically, it's a very, very low percentage, and if you feel comfortable, you could even increase this to something like eight. So this is just a ridiculous number. So you don't really have to worry about file name clashing. It's a very, very rare instance, depending on how many images you're dealing with. And you can always increase the length of the string. All right, so that is it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video.